My name's Ken Whiting. I'm a world champion whitewater paddler and I've led trips and taught kayaking around the world. As an athlete and explorer, my lifelong passion has been to challenge myself, meet interesting new people, discover beautiful places, and share these experiences with others. This is the story of these adventures. This is Paddle Tales. Hello everyone, I'm Ken Whiting and this is the 10th episode of Paddle Tales. It's a series that goes to some of the most amazing places in the world and goes on cool paddling adventures along the way. Now, in this episode, we're going to the land of the Cree, where the great outdoors is more than a reason to visit, it's a way of life. But before we get started, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because we have lots more great content coming your way. Now, if you haven't ever been to Quebec, what I can tell you is that it has something for everyone because it has lots of everything. It's got big and energetic cities, beautiful little villages, a stunning coastline, awesome food, and microbreweries. But one thing that it has more than anything else is pristine wilderness. And so we're leaving the big cities behind and diving deep into a land rich in culture and surrounded by nature. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're exploring Iwis Jeep Bay James. As big as the state of California, but with a population of only a few thousand, EUSG Bay James is one of the most untouched and pristine lands in the world. For the outdoors lover, it's a paradise with countless rivers and lakes to explore, including the biggest naturally occurring freshwater lake in the world, and an endless forest that's teeming with life. Obviously too big to explore on a single trip, we make our way to the Shibugamu Marina on Lake Shibugamu, a beautiful and full-service lodge that's ideally situated as a base for our trip and a great place to unwind from the long drive. The plan for today is to launch directly from the marina and explore the lake by kayak. Joining me for the paddle is Audrey Perot from the local tourism board. Now, Audrey really must have drawn the short straw because not only is she stuck with me for the day, but she's got to keep up paddling herself and her little one who's expected in only a few short months. The fact that she's joining me is a testament to how the outdoors is more than just a feature of the region. It's a way of life. So what do most people that visit this area come for? I'd say there's two main things. In the summer would be fishing, that's a really big thing. Uh, we have trophy fish, which we like to call walleye, walleye. northern pike, uh, speckle and lake trout. So uh, people like to come here for that because the fish are quite big and pretty much like uh, hiking, paddling, that kind of thing because there's a lot of lakes, there's a lot of woods, uh, even Close to the cities and the towns, it's really accessible. Nature is really accessible here. Well, there's one thing for sure, driving through this area, you're not lacking water. No. <laughs> <laughs> Rivers, lakes, ponds, marshes. Everywhere. <laughs> oh, Pretty yeah. much everywhere you look. And if you want to go like to town, get some groceries or do another activity, because there are other activities offered in town where it's really close, so you can do plenty of things and even discover the Cree culture, because Uje Bugamu, which is one of um, the closest Cree communities, is just 45 minutes away. They have a beautiful museum there, so that's an, another day trip that can be done when you're staying here. I think we're going to have to make that trip. <laughs> As we continue further down Lake Shibugamu, the sense of remoteness grows and the depth of the wilderness really comes into focus. It's amazing to think about how many opportunities there are for adventure in this area. I mean, as beautiful as this lake is, there are literally thousands of other equally remote and unique rivers and lakes that we could have chosen to paddle. 
This one just made sense because we were staying at the marina. On top of that, we're only paddling about a 10 mile section. And so even on this lake, there's still a ton of room for discovery. The bottom line is that you could spend a lifetime exploring this area and still only scratch the surface. This land, is this crown land? Is this Cree land? What is this land? That's a good question. Because <laughs> our region is particular in many aspects. One of it is with the signature of the James Bay Northern Quebec uh, Agreement. Uh, our the land was all divided into three categories. Category one and two lands are reserved for the native peoples. Yep. Um, as for category three lands, they are what we call public lands. And in the rest of Quebec, they would be called crown lands. Anyone can go with their boat or their paddle equipment, walk right. around the lake, those kind of thing. That's fine. If you want to do it in category one and two lands, you have to ask uh, permission from the bound council. Gotcha. So we're obviously we're in zone three. Right now we are, yep. Although there is a lot more water to explore on Lake Shibugamu, I'm really interested in learning more about the Cree of the area, who represent the largest group of First Nations in Canada. And so I make the short drive to the community of Uje Bugamu, which translated means the place where people gather. The Uje Bugamu Cree have a very long history in the region, but the village itself is quite new. After having been displaced and relocated repeatedly in the 20th century due to mining activities, the village was completely rebuilt in the 90s. One of the key developments within the community is the Cree Cultural Institute, a museum, archive center, library and cultural center, and a place for both native and non-natives to learn about the Cree culture. Well, you're at the Cree Culture Institute and the Stjogumuk, they call it, means generations to generations, where we teach all the crafts and arts, whatever comes with it, language. This is your history here. It is his part of history. I guess the elders knew that um, culture and language are slipping away, and they wanted to keep it, so they decided that they needed a building, working with uh, the Cree Nation government giving them some uh, ideas that they wanted a, a place where, where we could keep it and a place where they could teach the younger generations because, as you know, a lot of people lose cultures, right? Their identity and, and they wanted to keep that. So they created a place. Yeah, a pretty nice place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. It really is inspiring to see what has been done with the Uje Bugamu village. I'm excited to see more, and so I head a few miles out of town into the bush to a place called Nuchimi Winu Cree Cultural Tours. Here, Anna and David Bosom welcome guests year round to share their Cree culture. The couple have built a variety of traditional dwellings that showcase how the Cree people live for countless years, and which guests can choose to spend the night in for the full effect. So we do all kinds of activities here for the visitors. So they experience the, uh, our culture at the same time. And uh, we also promote it in the winter. So people can come here any time of year, yeah. pretty much, and stay in one of these many different types of traditional Cree lodgings. They want to find out where they're going to sleep. I, I, I tour them first, and then, uh, then they make up their minds where they want to sleep. Hmm, I never really thought of myself as into aromatherapy. This smells good. <laughs> I like the looks of this. Oh wow. As you see, this is one of the most uh, uh, traditional dwellings that the uh, Cree's lived in, in the old days before even I have a canvas. So what you see here is uh, all made of wood. These are sticks for roasting. Ah. Well, last time when you had here, we had roasted the uh, moose meat and roasted it there. Nice. Yeah. 
But there's an old story with these things too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a Sasquatch. If a Sasquatch comes in, you can stick out a Sasquatch. <laughs> Roast Sasquatch. Some more Sasquatch. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Down by the water, I find David Bosom carving away. And it's cool to see that what he's making is a paddle. For me, the paddle is unlike any other piece of paddling gear. It's your connection between hand and water, and in some cases, the incredible power of Mother Nature. Although the paddles that David is making are designed as much as works of art than for everyday paddling, it's definitely symbolic of the importance that paddling and the outdoors has within the Cree culture. This is all local wood, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I don't usually get them much here. I get them out in the island. What kind is that? Red spruce. Ah. Yeah, these are black spruce, eh? Yeah, because the black spruce has too many nuts, eh? Gotcha. And the red and green color, is that like a, is that a traditional color for? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, just, just to be seen, eh? Just to be seen to make it uh, look yeah. good, yeah. Visible on the water. And... Like a life, eh? A life. Because some people say if you make it just one color, it, they look sleep all the time. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> As my time in the Iwisji Bay James region comes to its end, I have to admit that I really didn't know what to expect from this trip. The truth of the matter is that even though the highway that leads here is in great condition, you're still very much off the beaten path. And there isn't a ton of information or imagery out there to help set your expectations. But that's exactly what made this trip such a treat. It's like sitting down to watch a movie that you know absolutely nothing about only to discover that it's one of the best movies you've ever seen. I love surprises and I love learning and this trip has provided both with flying colors and I'm looking forward to exploring more of this wild and wonderful region. Well that brings this episode of Paddle Tales to an end. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, leave a comment down below and stay tuned for a sneak peek at next week's Paddle Tales adventure. Next time on Paddle Tales, Luke Hopkins is grabbing his stand-up paddleboard and heading to one of the most vibrant and exciting cities in North America, the city of Montreal. A striking union of European charm and North American attitude, Montreal is a historic and multicultural place that pulses with energy. Set on the banks of the St. Lawrence River, Montreal also boasts some of the best freshwater surfing that you'll find anywhere. Join us as we explore all sides of Montreal next time on Paddle Tales. <laughs>